Hello everyone, I welcome you all to Programming Knowledge. So this is the second tutorial of our Django series. So in the first tutorial, I showed you how you can install Django on your local machine, how you can initialize a Django project as well as Django app on your local machine. So I wanted to tell you that uh, uh, like uh, in the previous tutorial, I told you like we were going to move with the request and response part. But uh, before this, I wanted to show you that uh, like I want to discuss a very important topic with you and that was about virtual environment. So I only want to uh, only want to focus on this topic only in this lecture because this topic has its own unique importance and value because it has a it has a good concept in itself uh, and you need to have a good knowledge about virtual environments how you can work with virtual environment variables so because uh, this would really help you like suppose you can have two cases here. Uh, like uh, I'm just giving you two scenarios why you need to learn about virtual environment. Suppose you have made your Django project and you want to deploy this Django project online. So in order to deploy this Django pro uh, project online, you're on a server, you need to have a, have a record of all the external libraries, dependencies and packages you have used in this project in a file called requirements.txt so that the server can install those dependencies packages and libraries on uh, on the server on the cloud i mean the server can install install that dependencies packages and libraries on the cloud then the server will install your application on the cloud and with the help of both the things when the both the things get installed then you are only able to run this application or second case you can have that when you are working in a team and there might be a possibility you want to share this code with someone else you want to share this whole project with someone else and they want to run this project on their machine or server as well but if they want to run this project or on their machine or the server server they need to have the list of those external libraries packages and dependencies you have mentioned in your project so that they can get get those dependencies installed on either on their machine or on the server in order to run this particular application so uh uh, uh, without any further delay, I again welcome you all to programming knowledge. And uh, so, the, I, my first step would be uh, I have created a folder uh, on my desktop with the name programming knowledge. And the very first step I am going to do is create a Django project, Django admin start project my first project. So when I run this command, so I'm able to create a project inside this directory. Here you can see this. You can even run the directory command as well. So this would make sure that you have created the project. Now, when you have made the project, you would move into the project folder with the command cd my first project. So I'm inside the uh, my project directory now. So now I would create a simple, I, uh, rather I would say that I would initialize an app inside this project folder. So in the, you can get familiar with these command lines in my previous tutorial with the name python manage dot py start app and you can name anything with your first app. I would uh, name this as my first App. So this looks good. So this has created a app inside my project directory. So to ensure this, I would again run the directory command, and it says my first has been installed. So I'm uh, going uh, slow with this because this has a very important concept now. Now I would run Python manage dot py run server now i hope the server gets started okay now it's running so either you can copy this address or you can say local host is same as 127.0.1 i mean 127.0.0.1 now it's with the port number 8000 so the local host colon 8000 is same as this address 
so this is the same as local host colon 8000 now i would uh, want you to terminate this uh, kill this uh, kill this server so i would uh, cross this and now i would open the command line again now i want to tell you how why i am going to show this i'm going to, i'm uh, i'm going slow with this because this is a very important concept so uh, now i would mo move to my desktop i would move to the programming knowledge folder then i would go to the uh, my project folder okay so now i am inside my project folder so you can have a graphical view of it also so this is the app being created i am the my uh, inside my project folder so now so i start started the server and it was running fine so i would refresh this page so uh, the server won't run now i guess so it's not running so because uh, i had terminated the process so okay now it looks fine so now i what i want to tell you is uh you can uh, open com your command line and type pip install virtual world env this is need this package is particularly needed to create a virtual environment so so this is requirement already satisfied because i already installed this and now i would move to my project directory and wait create a virtual environment variable with virtual env now you can uh, give any name to this uh, it could be my environment my first environment django environment variable it could be any name so you can have a name of your own so i would give it my env so this uh, this process takes a minute or so so this would create a virtual environment variable so by the time it gets installed i would like to uh, tell you something like we till now we have created uh, our environment variable name now we need to in order to use this environment variable name we need to activate this and why we are doing so because this would help us to keep track record of all those dependencies and packages required in order to be mentioned in requirements.txt file so we can use them so this is a very a good process uh, so now so this uh, environment has been installed now i would activate so i would type so before this uh, i would like to show you that i'm in the folder programming knowledge now i'm in the project directory this my env variable has been initialized with the folder so you can have a look at this folder my env scripts then there is activate so in order to activate this variable so what i need to do is i would go so this is the same as uh, i would go my env slash scripts slash activate uh, uh, activate please make sure the direction of sla uh, uh, slash sign so uh, please, do, uh, uh, please make a note of it so this would activate the virtual environment inside my project yeah this looks pretty good so the my env is now working here as a virtual environment variable which will help us to keep a uh, track record of our things so what i want you to do is the first thing i want to do that earlier we ran the command python manage dot py run server and the server had started on our machine so that looked pretty simple now i would type the same command again python sorry for this python manage dot py run server so now you see this process doesn't get started so it says couldn't import django are you sure it is it's installed and available on your python environment variable so uh the environment uh variable did you forget to activate a virtual environment uh but i'm sure pretty sure the virtual environment is is activated and i i this i this time i wanted to show you this because uh, i would again run this command and it would give me the same error because i want to tell you that the django has been installed on my machine 
so i want to tell you one thing that django has installed on my machine but not inside my virtual environment so i would repeat this the django earlier had installed inside my my local machine but not inside my virtual environment so this is the same case when you might want to work with uh, you when you work in a team and you might share the code with someone and he might the somebody might add an external dependency so how you can keep track that external dependency dependency has been added on your project so how will you keep a track record of those things so you will keep a track record of those things via environment variable and requirement on dxt so the very next command i would tell you to install django inside my virtual environment i would simply type pip install django so this would install django inside my virtual environment so i would want to repeat uh, so this would install django on my uh, uh, inside my virtual environment so yeah great so django has been installed on a machine then the first thing you need to type is so i would like to tell you that uh, i'm inside my project directory so django ha has been installed so in order to make sure this i would type this command pip freeze requirement dot txt so i would run the directory command now you can see a file called requirement dot txt has been created and i would open that file now this is the point i want to show you that to in order to run this project i need django as an external because django is a python based web framework so it is an external package or you can say dependency which python uses to make web application so this python package django is with needed with the version 3.0.2 in order to run this application so suppose i want to tell you so this is the now i will run the command because now i have made sure that inside my requirement txt django has been installed on my, inside my virtual environment i specified those environment variables packages dependency dependency inside the file requirement dot txt now i i made sure that django has been installed my uh, uh inside my uh, virtual environment now i would run the command python manage dot py run server so this would start the server now you can see that inside my environment variable i ran this command and the, this worked so i would go to this i would refresh this page now the server has started successfully so until now we have covered till this part sorry for this so what i mean with this command suppose i want to tell you that suppose uh we are working uh, on a project and someone uh, like i want to show you an example of this so, uh, so these are the suppose you are working on a data science project uh, and you are uh, working on a platform like django and someone might have come with three uh, must have added these three dependencies so what you can do is you can add those dependencies suppose i'm just for an example someone was working with an and i had added those dependencies on your project as well so you can utilize this by you can install those these dependencies your packages or uh, by running a command i would tell you so i would first uh, terminate this process so i would open my command line so i would go to the desktop folder then programming knowledge so and now i will run the directory command so yes requirement.txt is here and i can uh, read this file so i would type the command pip install minus r requirements.txt so this line means that install all those dependencies which are present inside the file requirements.txt in order to get working with this project so this would install all those dependencies so this might happen that already few of those dependencies might be already satisfied like i said this dependency is already satisfied and this might be uh, upgraded to something or uh, so so this is requirement already satisfied now when i came to matplotlib so it started with the process of installing those library so what i mentioned you so there might be case that someone might come and add a new uh, 
uh, package or dependency to it so you might need this in order to run the full application whole application so to keep a track record of the dependencies required you need to specify them in, in a file code requirement or txt and the server does the same very same thing when you deploy your application and the server uh, in order to run the application on cloud you need to define those dependencies which are needed to run the application so this is a very important concept and to install those you can run this command pip install minus r requirements.txt in order to run all those application so uh, thank you very much uh, uh, very much thank you uh, again welcome you all to programming knowledge so in the next tutorial i'm going to cover with the request and the response part so uh, uh thank you everyone thank you